Hello, my cool cat, Eric. So, I wanted to start off with this weird dream I had this morning, and then we're going to continue on with Literature Week. So, as my dream went, so we started off, I was in a train going somewhere, and a, there was like a kid in front of me, and he was with his adoptive parents, and I guess his real parents had died a couple of months ago, and he still didn't really understand like the what death is. I'm not sure how that pertained to anything else, but that, that, that was the first part. And then, from that train, I went onto a plane, and then the plane got into an airport, and I was supposed to have another connecting flight, but that was nowhere to be seen anywhere in the terminal. So I had to go to, I tried to go to the head honcho people who were in this rundown apartment-y building place, and, you know, there's a big line of us trying to get through the people. And in one of the apartments, like, floor level, so that we were all kind of walking past his open window, was this meth head. <laughs> and so he sees us all, and he, of all the people, of course he chooses me, and he gives me meth. <laughs> and so I start freaking out, like, I, I have drugs in my system, are they going to allow me onto the plane? And so I hijack one of the flight attendants, or one of the people in the office, in the, um, one of the women working there, and... So, you know, to have her test my blood. And so we go into some other random person's house. Uh, there are two people there. The flight attendant eats all of their pastries. I think they had petty fours. <laughs> and uh, tests my blood. And luckily, there's no meth. But she notices the shape of my fingers and, like, their knobbly bits. And she's like, yeah, if this knobbly bit gets any bigger, like, the knobbly bits were, like, a measure of how much chlorine was in my system. And if I had any more chlorine that day, I was going to die. <laughs> uh, so we get all that squared away, head back to the dude in charge, and he has this massive wooden block, and he whittles out this broomstick. You know, not the twigs and whatnot on the end, but just the plain old stick. And for some reason, it's all blue, and my like everything's blue. Maybe it's magic or something. But I'm supposed to use that to fly to my next destination. And that's when I woke up. So that was my dream. And on to... <laughs> and on to Literature Week. Today is... My manuscript. Um, I have to do a creative project in my late high and late Middle Ages class. And so I wrote a weird story and turned it into an illuminated manuscript. I did this over spring break at Eric's. At yours? And so I figured I would share it with these really crummy pictures. So we're going to see how this goes. Once a time, according to this body tale, there lived a man named Lou. In this story, he found himself bound to a bed with no recollection of how, or perhaps more importantly, why and by whom. And then, more importantly still, he realized that he needed to relieve his aching bladder. He struggled a moment with the ropes fastening him to the bedpost, but felt no sign of giving purchase. Lou called out, Help! In the name of our Lord, help! But to no avail. No barmaid came along, nor lady, no blacksmith, nor deacon, no beggar, nor knight. Lou remained alone, save for the suffering that manifested itself in the proximity of his loins. He looked about the room in an attempt to distract his mind. This also proved fruitless, as the decorations and fixings included a half-finished pint of ale and a sole painting illustrating a picturesque waterfall. It was as though the room had been designed to hone his focus. Lou then cast his gaze to his body with the intent of gleaning information explaining his predicament. The being tied to the bed predicament, not that of his bursting liquid pouch. His clothing was all intact, donned, and relatively clean. No broken bones, burns, or scratches presented themselves. He did not see any clues or hints. Lou began to grow bored around this time. Well, bored among physically stressed. He contemplated simply letting his juices flow, and not the creative ones. But as he was unsure of his future, and did not fancy laying in any more of his own filth than was necessary, he opted out. The cycle of pain and ennui continued round and round for what seemed like hours, though most certainly even the most poised and proper bladder could not contain its contents so precisely for such a period of time. Oh, Lou moaned, Abaddon and Asriel have taken to ravaging me! However will I escape? Lou then, as prisoners are wont to do, 
focused on what he would do when freed. Urinate, of course, but how? Shall I hobble gingerly to the receptacle, or run as if my posterity depended on the final act? It must not take much time, but yet too much jiggling will render useless my restraint of these past hours. I know, Lou exclaimed. I shall skip! Suddenly, accompanied by the pungent aroma of brimstone, a short, horned, tailed, and strikingly scarlet being came into being on the bedpost perched. Good call, boss, he said. You thought up your rhyme. The miniature hell fiend snapped his fingers, and the room, pint, bed, bindings, and all, disappeared. The little devil demon began to sing, Loo, loo, skip to my loo, 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 skip to my loo, 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 skip to my loo, skip to my loo, my darling. And Lou did. And it was glorious. Fiend. So, that's that. <laughs> hey? I'm actually going to be reading this in front of an entire class, uh, an entire classroom of people in about an hour's time. I'm excited. I don't know if you could tell, but some of the drawings, like one of, like, the O is like a toilet. Oop, you can't see the O. That's the O. The O is a toilet. Um, that H is a couple people in bed. That one actually turned out really well. They all got, they're all pretty shoddy, but they get better as they go along. Um, what was it? That one. This was originally a, um, male's organ, but I figured that was a little much, so I half-bakedly altered it. <laughs> and we do have the back. So yes. That would be that. And so I need to remember to actually bring that to class. And edit this so I can go to class. I've developed a habit of doing that. I love it. I think it's it sounds and looks fantastic. So cheers. <laughs>